Hey everyone, today I'll be teaching you how to make this delicious seafood gumbo. This was my first time making it, so I really hope you guys enjoy the video. So, let's get started. We're going to begin by prepping our ingredients. Dice one onion. Two pieces of celery. And green onions. Then slice some andouille sausage. And peel and devein some shrimp. Make sure to keep your shrimp shells, we're going to use those for later. When you're finished prepping all your ingredients for your gumbo, set them to the side. Now we're going to prep our ingredients for our seafood stock. Cut up one onion. One tomato. One green bell pepper. And three pieces of celery. Now in a large pot over medium heat, add two tablespoons of olive oil. Then add all of your vegetables. Saute your vegetables for about four to five minutes. After that, add your shrimp shells from before. Let that cook for about one to two minutes or until your shrimp shells have turned pink. Once everything is cooked, add one to two tablespoons of minced garlic or three to four garlic cloves. Then add four quarts of water. A half a cup of white wine. One tablespoon of tomato paste. One teaspoon of pepper. One teaspoon of complete seasoning. One teaspoon of dried thyme. Some fresh parsley. And any leftover seafood shells you might have. I added lobster shells and king crab shells to mine. Oh, and two bay leaves. Now let that simmer over low heat for two to three hours. This is totally optional. You don't have to make your own seafood stock. If you want, you can just use chicken broth. Once your stock has finished cooking, go ahead and strain it. Then set your stock to the side. In a large pot over medium heat, Cook your andouille sausages. When your sausages have finished cooking, take them out of the pan. Then, while the pot is still hot, add 3 fourths cup of vegetable oil. Then heat your oil up over medium heat. Before adding your flour, make sure your oil is hot enough. You can test this by sprinkling some flour into your oil and if it sizzles, it's ready. 
Then gradually add one cup of flour while whisking. Right now we're making our roux. I made mine thicker since I won't be adding any okra. Okra is usually used as a thickening agent. But if you do want to add okra to your gumbo, you're going to want to add one cup of flour and one cup of vegetable oil to your roux so it's thinner. Continue to cook your roux for about 20 to 30 minutes, or until your roux is the color of chocolate. It also depends on how dark you want your roux to be. I cooked mine for 20 minutes, but if you want yours to be darker, you could cook it for 30 minutes or 40 minutes. Just make sure you're constantly whisking your roux and make sure you don't burn it. While you're cooking your roux, you'll gradually see it become darker. After 20 minutes, my roux was the color of milk chocolate. Now that your roux is finished cooking, add one cup of your diced onions. Then add your celery. And finally, add one cup of bell peppers. Now you're gonna let that cook for about five to 10 minutes. You can't make gumbo without the holy trinity, onions, celery, and bell peppers. Or at least that's what I heard. When you finish cooking your vegetables, add one to two tablespoons of minced garlic. Let that cook for one minute and then add your sausages. Then add one can of diced tomatoes. So about 14 to 16 ounces of diced tomatoes. So when I was doing my research on gumbo, I learned that Adding tomatoes is usually done in Creole gumbo, but not usually done in New Orleans style gumbo. So adding tomatoes is totally optional. I decided to add tomatoes because I really like tomatoes. Now add two to three quarts of your stock. And this is very important. Make sure your stock is hot before you add it in your pan. Make sure your pan is also hot. Make sure both the pan and the stock is hot. But not like boiling hot, you know what I mean? Just hot enough. By the way, if you don't want your gumbo to be that thick, you can always add more stock. Now stir everything together. Now add one tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce, one teaspoon of smoked paprika, a half a teaspoon of cayenne pepper, one teaspoon of pepper, one to two teaspoons of salt, one fourth teaspoon of onion powder, 1 fourth teaspoon of garlic powder, two bay leaves, added a bit more Worcestershire sauce, and one tablespoon of hot sauce. Mix everything together, then cover with a lid and let it simmer for about an hour or an hour and a half. After letting your gumbo simmer, add one cup of lump crab, and your shrimp. Let that cook for about five to seven minutes or until the shrimp has completely cooked. When your shrimp is finished cooking, reduce your heat. Once your shrimp is cooked, go ahead and taste your gumbo and add any additional seasonings that you think you might need. I added two to three teaspoons of sugar, one to two teaspoons of Creole seasoning, some more onion powder, a half a teaspoon of Cajun seasoning, and a little bit of liquid seafood boil. After you've added your desired seasonings, add a half a cup of green onions. Don't forget to remove your bay leaves as well. And that's it, you've finished making your gumbo. If you want, you could also add some crab legs or some crawfish in your gumbo. Now that you've finished making your gumbo, it's time to plate it up. Add some rice in the middle of your plate or bowl, then add your gumbo around it. This is optional, but you could add any additional seafood that you want. I added some crab legs, some lobster claws, and some crawfish. Top it with some green onions and you are all finished.
and this is the finished result. It tasted really good and it came out better than I expected. I've wanted to make gumbo ever since I watched Princess and the Frog when I was a kid, so I'm really happy I got the opportunity to make it. Since this was my first time making gumbo, I made a bunch of mistakes. I will show you the mistakes that I made in the outtakes because I want you to avoid the mistakes I made if you can. Also, if you've made gumbo before, I would really appreciate any tips or advice that you might have. But for my first time making gumbo, I don't think I did that badly because mom had like five plates of it and my dad had two plates of it. It tasted really good, it smelled delicious, it was very flavorful, so I'm really happy with the outcome. I know that everybody makes their gumbo differently, so this was just my version of gumbo. I hope to improve my skills as time goes on, and I hope I can improve when I make it again. Alright, that's it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Everything I used in this video will be down in the description below. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Bye! Alright, so now we're going to talk about the mistakes I've made and the things I learned. If the oil you're using for your roux isn't hot, your roux is going to be ruined. Make sure your oil is hot before adding any flour. You have to constantly stir your roux or it will burn. Constantly. I used a whisk, but you can always use a wooden spoon. If you start to see dark specks in your roux, it's most likely burnt, and you have to start all over again. If you accidentally burn your roux and you didn't notice until after you've added your stock and your gumbo has a burnt taste to it, add half a raw potato into your gumbo and let it sit for about 10 to 15 minutes. The potato will absorb the burnt taste. After you remove the potato, your gumbo should be fine. Make sure your mixture and your stock are hot before adding your stock because this will happen. If your pot isn't warm or your stock is too cold or isn't warm enough, it'll cause the stock and the root to separate once they meet, resulting in this, which is super unappealing and just looks nasty. I hope this helps and you guys learn from my mistakes.